the Yangtze River and the Pearl River deltas can be said to be the two major economic locomotives and the two major manufacturing regions of China. Now they are facing a serious unemployment problem. Every day now, people are losing their jobs, and every day working people are taking turns to be off work. Maybe people still don't know how difficult the situation is in Dongguan right now. We are also off today. This year is more difficult than the three years of the epidemic. Even the three years of the epidemic won't like this year. No factory has any work to do, no orders. I don't know why there's nothing to do in every factory this year. I just met my colleague's husband. The factory he works at is a large company that moved here from Shenzhen. Last year, I saw many people working every day, with more than 100 employees coming in and out. At its peak, I saw their HR department recruiting, hiring more than 300 people a day. But this year, they also have one day work and one day off. The employees working shifts. You can tell how hard it is to do business now. These days, you have no idea how difficult it is for people to make a living in Dongguan. I don't know why this year will be like this. In previous years, it wasn't even this difficult. I'll take you to see the large factory. It's the end of the day. If anyone is working, this road will be full of people going back and forth. People are leaving for dinner. That side is the new building, a large and beautiful factory. This is a high-tech enterprise with high salaries. When I first moved here, some people joined this factory and said the wages were particularly high. The plant had two shifts and they worked 24 hours a day. Each month, they could make seven to eight thousand yuan. That is one thousand to twelve hundred U.S. dollars. But this year, they also have to take turns to be off. It's one day work, one day off, and the employees have to take turns. Not all of them can work at the same time. These are all employees of this factory. In previous recruiting seasons, they were full of job postings here, but now there is none. Even the billboards for jobs have been removed. Hello, are you hiring here? No more? Thank you. Such a big company has stopped hiring. It has stopped hiring. How horrible is the current situation? Now Dongguan is really difficult, so difficult. There is nothing to do in every factory, and most are laying off employees. How do you solve the problem of unemployment? Officials in Guangdong Province, located in the Pearl River Delta, have come up with a solution. That is to send young people to the countryside. In February, the Guangdong Provincial Committee of the Communist Youth League issued a document. It said that by 2025, a total of 100,000 young people will be arranged to help in their hometowns. 100,000 young people will be contacted to serve as interns in their hometowns. 100,000 young people will be trained to improve their skills in rural development, and we strive to bring 10,000 young people to work in their counties and support 10,000 young people to start their own businesses in their counties. That is to say, to organize a total of 300,000 young people to go to the countryside within three years, to have 10,000 people eventually settled in the county and township level places for employment, and 10,000 people to start businesses in the county and township. It is clear to the outside world that Guangdong's economy is in trouble. In 2021, the province accounted for 10.9 percent of the national GDP. It's one of the most economically active provinces in China and should also be one of the most job-creating provinces. This province has two major cities, Guangzhou and Shenzhen, and a series of fast-growing cities such as Foshan and Dongguan. Foshan's population rose from 7.1 million in 2001 to 9.7 million in 2021. Dongguan's population crossed the 10 million mark in 2020. But look, there are now closed stores everywhere in Dongguan. Because there are no foreign trade orders, the factory with dozens of machine tools has also gone out of business. Close down. Years of hard work. Bye bye. Goodbye. If the job market in Guangdong is large enough to absorb young college graduates, there is no need to organize 300,000 young people to go to the countryside. 
In 2021, there were 640,000 new college graduates in Guangdong and 710,000 in 2022. 300,000 people means about 40 to 50 percent of the annual total population of new graduates in Guangdong. According to the document, most of them are returning to the countryside for internships and receiving training, that is, temporary placement in the countryside. Why is it temporary? Because the government can't force young people to stay in the countryside for the rest of their lives. This type of temporary placement can help the government solve the pressing unemployment problem, avoid the peak unemployment season in the city, and prevent the situation from continuing where crowds of people compete for jobs in the city. This is a toy factory in Shenzhen, Guangdong province, where the employees are about to be laid off because the factory is being relocated to Vietnam. The employees aren't compensated accordingly, so they go on a strike. Ah, it's over. There are more and more people sleeping on the streets, and many people can't find jobs. Ugh, what a mess. What is wrong with this society now? In theory, people's lives should be getting better, but why is it the other way around? It's getting harder and harder to find a job, and more and more people are sleeping on the streets. Seeing so many people sleeping on the streets every day is heartbreaking. Is there a future for working people? Can young people go on like this? Every day, there are so many people who can't find a job, have no place to sleep, and end up sleeping on the streets. Friends, here is Shenzhen's Longhua bus station. Anyone who's been here knows. So there is no future for working people. Young people like me feel that there is no future, let alone any dream. With people gathered in the city and unable to find jobs, it is likely that the party will be most afraid of crowds marching in the streets or crowds gathering together for mass movements, etc. In the name of internship and training, the Guangdong government tries to lead the students to feel that it's only temporary and they aren't really settled down in the countryside as peasants. But the question is, how long will this temporary placement be? Perhaps it will be much longer than what the young people think. Guangdong province is the first to launch such a campaign to send 300,000 young people to the countryside, which should be considered a pilot. It is possible that a larger campaign is being planned. Once it's launched, other provinces will follow. The CCP's official media has recently published a series of articles encouraging urban youth to go to the countryside to revitalize the countryside. On Weibo, a Chinese social media platform, how to attract more talent to return to their hometowns has now become a topic of discussion. Stories such as a girl born after the 1990s returning from overseas makes farming in her hometown trendy. This village doctor born after 2000 has become the most popular person in the village. Or a girl born after 1995 became an agri-mechanic are all pumped out by the official media including China Youth Daily. According to the China Bureau of Statistics, the unemployment rate for urban youths aged 16 to 24 reached 19.9% in 2021, dropping slightly to 18.1% in the first two months of this year. But the actual unemployment figure should be much higher. Many young people in China are choosing lower-paying jobs. Some want to work in the public sector, but in the past three years, local governments have run up high debts as the Communist Party's extreme COVID-0 policy has hollowed out local finances. As a result, a large number of people, including young people, are facing an exceptionally difficult situation. For some markets that don't require much skill, it's time to compete first for physical strength. This is a recruitment site in Shanghai. Job applicants are required to do 20 push-ups in about 30 seconds. So within these 30 seconds, a succession of people will be taken out of the hiring process. At these recruiting sites, there is a weightlifting competition and a two-minute rope skipping simulation. After passing the physical strength tests, applicants can enter the next stage of the interview. These are scenes that were hardly seen before. 
On the Chinese web, young people are seeing job hunting as a mission impossible now. The vicious internal competition for jobs in Chengdu is too much. If you have no skills, just an ordinary college graduate or undergraduate, the salary is about two to four thousand yuan. That is three hundred to six hundred U.S. dollars. How can you expect to survive on that? This is like to have us live on nothing. If you are skilled, the wage may be U.S. seven hundred to eleven hundred dollars. The highest is. Fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars, but basically it's U.S. three hundred to six hundred dollars. How can a man expect to support his wife and children as well as mortgage and car loans with this kind of income? Most likely, he won't be able to find a wife. If the girl's own salary is U.S. four hundred to six hundred dollars a month, the man won't dare to approach her to burden her. The girl will think. Becoming your girlfriend would just mean lower my quality of life. The men have become a drag on the girls and are afraid of having a relationship. Chengdu is a big city, a first-tier city, but this income of owning U.S. three hundred to six hundred dollars doesn't give me the feeling of living in a big city. It feels more like Chengdu is already a city that lies flat. I lie flat at home every day. I make one thousand yuan a month for doing self-media or U.S. one hundred and fifty dollars. If I work in a company, the income is about U.S. three hundred dollars a month. But the owner will boss you around and tell you to do whatever, and you won't have the guts to argue, or you get fired because Chengdu has no shortage of people. Shanghai, a major city in the Yangtze River Delta, is also experiencing a wave of unemployment, just like Guangdong. 今天带大家看一下上海返乡的人有多少啊？ Today we're going to show you how many people, and this is the lobby. There are a lot of people in the lobby. Some are here because they can't find a job in Shanghai this year. Some people can't find a job that suits them, so they have no choice but to go back to their hometown. Nearby, there is a couple. They look like they were born in the 1970s, about 40 to 50 years old. They said they were going to Guangdong. They had been in Shanghai for more than ten days, but couldn't find a job because they were a bit too old. Since they can't find a job that suits them, they plan to go to Guangdong Province to look for work. They said that when they were in Guangdong, they heard that the wages in Shanghai were high. This year, they came to Shanghai after the Chinese New Year, but they couldn't find a suitable job and had no choice but to leave. Everyone has a good reason for leaving Shanghai, I think. There is also a young couple. They are planning to go back home for some time and then come back to Shanghai to look for a job when the situation improves in a few months. I'm going back home today, and I'm waiting at the high-speed train at Hongqiao train station. I just got the news that Ali in Hangzhou is laying off employees, and TMT is also laying off massive numbers of employees. Anyway, the economic environment is really hard. Many companies are laying off people, and I feel that the situation will become increasingly difficult in the future. It's really hard to find a job now. Many are taking one day off per week, and then not all five insurances and housing funds are provided. Fewer companies need people. Salaries are generally not high. I don't know if it's just our industry or if the whole environment is like this. I feel it should be the whole environment. In Beijing, China's capital city in the north, people are similarly enveloped in a heavy atmosphere of downsizing and extraordinary difficulty in securing a job. In 2023, the unemployment rate in Beijing is set to reach a new high. What's going to happen to those northern drifters who don't have a job? I work for a state-owned newspaper. Last year, it fired one third of its staff, and most of the small and medium-sized enterprises in Beijing have stopped hiring. The epidemic in the past few years has put a lot of companies in recession. The situation now is that every industry is in its most challenging and. Dire moment. 
Take our newspaper as an example. No matter how many or few articles we print, we still have to pay our staff as usual. Now the organization doesn't keep idle people, and no one wants to live on a meager salary. In good times, employees can earn more than U.S. fifteen hundred a month. I can't imagine what the families would do if everyone loses their jobs, whether they are from out of town or Beijing natives. There is a sense of crisis. No one wants to be eliminated because it's really exhausting. To look for a job, change the job, and send our resumes. You may not be able to find a suitable job for a few months. Why is sending young people to the countryside considered an option of cushion by the party? This is because under the CCP's regime, China has a huge difference between urban and rural economic development. The rural population is considered to have lifelong jobs and therefore not counted in the unemployment rate. The official name for China's unemployment rate is Urban Survey Unemployment Rate. If young people are relocated to the countryside, they are taken out of the unemployment statistics, which means the officials will have achieved politically and saved face as well. Large cities have many times more resources than rural areas. When the household registration system was somewhat relaxed, a huge number of rural residents flocked to the cities to work. Their youth and sweat have built China's status as the world's factory, and some people from rural areas or small towns consider getting a big city household registration as a major accomplishment in life. Moreover, many Chinese don't see anything wrong with these systems. In Hangzhou, I walked for eight years outside. After eight years of running takeout in Hangzhou, I'm finally a resident of Hangzhou. This is the household registration I got. I have been preparing for this day for six years. It's really not easy to live in Hangzhou without a household registration, especially for families with children. I almost left my child behind because I didn't have a Hangzhou household registration account. There was no place for my child to go to school. I meant kindergarten, so I had to pay 120,000 yuan or 18,000 U.S. dollars to send my child to a private kindergarten to finish a three-year education. This much money is enough for a rural child to finish a college education. For our occupation, no one pays social insurance to us, so our children can't attend schools in Hangzhou. So I paid the social insurance premium for six years and applied for a residence permit in Hangzhou, so I could stay here at least. We have to obey the school arrangement. As a result, my kids' school and my workplace are more than 30 kilometers apart. I'm trying to figure out how to get my child to go to school without being left behind in my hometown. The only way is to get a Hangzhou household account. To get an account in Hangzhou, you either have to be admitted as a special talent or you have to accumulate points. I chose the latter. In order to get more points, I registered for residence every year. Paid for social insurance at my own expense and studied on my own to get a degree over two and a half years, which earned me 30 points. I took out a loan of one million yuan, or about 150,000 U.S. dollars, to buy a home, which added another 40 points. The good thing is that for this year's application for Hangzhou household registration, you only need 100 points. If I don't reach it this year, I will have to work hard again next year by doing charity work, donating blood, etc., to gain more points. Hangzhou has been working towards becoming a cosmopolitan city, and it will definitely become a first-tier city in China, giving us ordinary people the opportunity to get on board. I also hope that the children of all my brothers and sisters won't be left behind in the future. So, can sending young people to the countryside, this kind of temporary placement, solve the problem? From the 1950s to the 1970s, the CCP launched the movement of going to the mountains and going to the countryside. Students from three consecutive years, classes of 1966 to 1968. Were unable to graduate and join Society for Work due to China's Cultural Revolution. A backlog of ungraduated students from universities, high schools, and junior high schools meant schools couldn't accept any more students. As a result, those students had to be transferred immediately out of school. However, Mao Zedong, the CCP leader, had achieved his goal by using the students in his political movement. He was eager to get rid of the radical students. As a result, tens of millions of urban-educated youth were sent to support the countryside and frontiers. They traveled far away with no date of return, interrupted their studies, and received no further education. 
Therefore, the going to the mountains and going to the countryside movement became the nightmare of that generation. At that time, there were production teams organized by rural grassroots organizations and communes organized by the government to help the Communist Party take care of young people. And there were household registrations, food stamps, etc. to restrain these young people. Young people were arranged to live in farmers' homes and the government provided rations to these young people. Farmers had to accept the government's arrangements. It's different now. The rural areas have undergone reforms. The rural fields have been allocated to each farmer's family. In theory, the land is the private property of the farmers. If the government requires the farmers to provide rations to these young people who have gone to the countryside, it will be very difficult to do. The government also has no money to subsidize young people. Let those young people live in rural households on a large scale and work as long-term laborers for poor peasant households. This is also obviously not feasible. Just imagine, if township enterprises have needs for workers, why don't they recruit themselves? When the rural economy has no demand for labor, assigning people or giving them quotas for accepting college students will only have a destructive effect and destroy the original operation of the rural economy. However, the CCP mentality is always different. We will continue to observe what kind of chain reaction it will bring.